OpenAI just dropped Sora, their new text-to-video AI tool. And while the internet's buzzing, I feel like something's missing from all those shiny announcement videos you've already seen. Today, I want to go beyond the basics, beyond the Sora is out, generate cool clips headlines, and really dig into what OpenAI hasn't been shouting from the rooftops. There are controversies, hidden constraints, regional issues, artist backlash, and rumors about what's going on behind the scenes. Even reviewers like Marques Brownlee, who got an early peek, are calling it horrifying and inspiring at the same time. That's not exactly the safe PR spin you'd expect, right? Let's start with what we officially know. OpenAI rolled Sora out on December 9, 2024. If you're in the US, or most countries, as they say, you can use it if you're subscribed to ChatGPT+, Plus, which costs $20 per month, or ChatGPT Pro, $200 per month. Plus, folks get around 50 videos per month at up to 720p and five seconds long, while pro subscribers can generate up to 500 priority videos per month, go for up to 1080p resolution, 20 second durations, and even have up to five concurrent generations. Pro users can also create unlimited relaxed videos that won't count against their credits, as long as they don't mind waiting when the service is busy. But here's where things start getting interesting. Sora isn't available everywhere. Specifically, if you're in the UK, Switzerland, or the European economic area, you're out of luck, at least for now. Why? According to multiple reports and rumors that have popped up online in the last 24 hours, OpenAI is probably dealing with complex compliance challenges related to data protection laws and the Digital Services Act in Europe. Some leaked memos mention that OpenAI's internal compliance teams are still scrambling to make sure Sora meets regulatory standards. It's not just a matter of flipping a switch, there's a whole legal and ethical minefield here, especially with the potential for deep fakes and disinformation. OpenAI says they're blocking particularly damaging forms of abuse, including sexual deep fakes and child sexual abuse materials. They're also inserting C2PA metadata and visible watermarks to ensure people know a video is AI generated. That's a step in the right direction, but critics argue it might not be enough. Some digital forensics worry that as soon as these protections are out, people will find ways around them. And if you've been following AI, you know that's not exactly far-fetched. Now let's talk quality and limitations. Marquez Brownlee, uh, or MKBHD, tested Sora and described the outputs as horrifying and inspiring. On one hand, you can get these incredibly lush cinematic landscapes, stylized scenes reminiscent of stop motion or cardboard craft worlds, and all sorts of artistic effects. On the other hand, the physics can be bizarre and inconsistent. Um, objects morphing, people flickering strangely, gravity defying logic, and just this overall uncanny valley vibe. It's as if Sora's great at producing dreamy, surreal visuals, but stumbles when it comes to consistent realism over longer time frames. This inconsistency ties into the technical underpinnings. Sora uses diffusion-based models, starting from noise and refining frame by frame. It's computationally heavy and energy intensive. Some folks online are raising questions about its environmental footprint. Just like we saw with large scale text models, running these video generations at scale could be a massive energy drain. But maybe the biggest controversy isn't about resolution or physics. It's about the artists. Remember, Sora wasn't always public. Before today's big release, a select group of artists and creators got early access. OpenAI claims they voluntarily participated to help refine Sora, but about two weeks ago, a group of these artists, calling themselves PR puppets, actually leaked the Sora tool publicly before the official launch. Why? They accused OpenAI of using their unpaid labor to improve the tool and artwash its image. They argue OpenAI was leveraging their creativity to train and refine the model without proper compensation or attribution. This kicked off a mini firestorm. Artists said they're not just free R&D units and want meaningful reinvestment and transparency. They criticized OpenAI for creating a narrative that welcomed them as collaborators while ignoring their real concerns about their work being used as mere training fodder. OpenAI's response was that hundreds of artists shaped Sora's development and participation was voluntary. But that didn't really calm the backlash. In fact, just within the last day, new essays popped up online from these artists, an entire collection called Art in the Cage of Digital Reproduction. They're pushing the debate forward, asking for real compensation, and a say in how their work and styles are used to train future AI models. 
Also, not everything is as open as it seems. Uh, according to various Reddit threads and Discord discussions, some quite recent, OpenAI isn't super transparent about credit consumption. Sure, they give you a breakdown in their official documentation. For example, a five second 480 video might cost around 20 credits, while a 20 second 1080 one might run you 2,000 credits. But users are already complaining that these numbers don't reflect how quickly credits disappear when you experiment with multiple variations, loops, or complex animations. Some are claiming their credits vanish faster than anticipated, suggesting maybe there are hidden multipliers or just poor communication around how credits are tallied. Speaking of complexity, Sora's moderation policies are another gray area. The official line is strict, no harmful content, no realistic portrayals of public figures that could mislead. But how does that moderation actually play out in practice? Rumor has it that certain prompts, especially those referencing known celebrities or politicians, either get auto-rejected or produce weirdly generic outputs that hint at heavy invisible guardrails. Some prompts might even break Sora's internal logic, suggesting OpenAI is relying on an evolving, still imperfect moderation framework. Despite all these lurking issues and controversies, OpenAI is moving full steam ahead. They've upgraded from the earlier version of Sora shown in February to this new Sora Turbo that's significantly faster. They're planning more tailored pricing early next year, which suggests they're eyeing different user segments, maybe agencies, production houses, or even big studios. Some insiders speculate we'll see advanced features like Sora Ultra or Sora Studio with multi-scene editing timelines, better training filters, or dedicated theme presets that go beyond cardboard and paper craft aesthetics. About the presets, Sora isn't just about realism, obviously. It lets you choose between all sorts of styles, moody film noir, earthy archival looks, or even cardboard and paper craft textures. The community feed, which shows off featured and recent creations, is already filling up with surreal experiments. But here's a thought. As these community examples flood in, Sora's training data will likely expand. With every public generation, the model might be learning, refining. Some worry that even your personal creations could feed back into the model's pipeline, improving it for everyone else without giving you a say. Now, about that horrifying aspect Marques Brownlee mentioned, Sora sometimes melds dreamlike scenes with improbable movements, and it can deliver results no human camera could ever capture. That's both the beauty and the beastliness of AI video. It can transport you to worlds that don't exist, but also remind you how alien an AI's understanding of reality still is. So maybe Sora's flaws are actually part of what makes it fascinating, an artifact of this transitional moment in AI history, where we're seeing the first baby steps of a technology that might one day craft entire feature-length films on the fly. To close it out, let's ask, what is OpenAI not telling us about Sora? They're not exactly trumpeting the fact that Europe is off limits right now because compliance hurdles are massive. They're not leaning into discussions about how expensive and energy intensive these processes are. They're not proactively addressing credit confusion or how their moderation filters might limit certain forms of expression. And while they mention some safety measures, it feels like a race against time between the model's rapidly improving capabilities and the policies and protections that try and often fail to keep up. In other words, Sora is here, but the full story is still being written. So before you dive headfirst into generating your own 20 second cinematic clips or mixing a jungle into a lunar view, remember that we're all part of a massive experiment. The lines between creator and consumer collaborator and test subject are blurred. Open AI's Sora may be the cutting edge right now, but we're still figuring out what this cutting edge can do and what it might cut through before we even realize what's happened. That's it guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you excited, worried, intrigued, or all of the above? Have you tried Sora yet or are you stuck on the sign up page due to heavy traffic? And do you think Open AI owes more transparency to us? or to the artists whose work inspired these models. Let's keep the conversation going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.